Welcome back to our workshop. There's one tool I use on every single project I do, and that's clamps. I'd prefer to use trigger clamps for a couple of reasons. One is you can use them one-handed. The second is I can convert this from a regular clamp to a spreader clamp, so I can use it to take things apart. The other is they've got built-in padding on them, and this padding helps prevent marring on surfaces, as well as it works when there's slight different angles like working on chair legs. I'm in the market for new clamps for my workshop. The major manufacturers have sent me samples of theirs, and I've purchased two really cheap ones on Amazon. I'm going to test them out to understand which ones work best for both a budget perspective and a quality perspective. Stick with me, I'm going to open up these boxes, it's a little bit like Christmas. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. The front rail here, you can see this has been broken off. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. I previously opened a box for this clamp because I needed an extra clamp on a project I was doing for repairing outdoor furniture. You can see that and I teach about what adhesives you should be using for outdoor use. I'll leave a link up here and I'll leave a link in the video description as well. This Jorgensen clamp is the most expensive clamp in the test year. This is $53.99 on Amazon.ca and I'm going to be using the pricing from Amazon just to have it consistent across these. Um, if you're not familiar with Canadian dollars, the least expensive versus the most will at least give you a scale of the pricing on these. Let's pull out the next one here. Where's this from? This is DeWalt. I've requested 24 inch so I can compare 24 inch to 24 inch and you can see both of these are rated for 300 pounds. Next is a box from Irwin. So these will be quick grip clamps. This is what I've been using for about 20 years. I've got three generations of clamps here on the wall. Let's see what's in this box. Oh, wow, there's five clamps in here. That's generous. These are 24 inch clamps, 300 pounds clamping pressure. And the design here is different than the ones that I currently have. So it'll be interesting to try these out. This one says Bessie Tools on it. Oh, there's a couple clamps in this one too. So this is a 24 inch and we've got 300 pounds clamping force. So very consistent for this test. This would be a good comparison. The nice folks at Bessie sent four clamps. Two of them are rated for 300 pounds and two of them are rated for 445 pounds. So these ones I'm going to set aside and not test them, but I'm curious to see what they're like. Now there are three general categories of trigger clamps. There's mini, there's medium duty, which are the ones I've got here and the ones that I use in my workshop, and then there are heavy duty. The mini and the heavy duty are relatively new innovations with this style of clamp. These clamps here, the quick grip, were patented in 1990. So it gives you an idea of how long they've been around. I've got two more clamps left. I bought both of these on Amazon. This is the Tecton, so it's a 24 inch bar clamp. There's no rating on this in terms of pounds. Uh, this was the second least expensive one. So the last one is the cheapest one I found on Amazon. This one's called the Home Handyman. It's 24 inches and there's no clamping force on this one either. This one was the cheapest. This was $21.44 Canadian on Amazon. The Home Handyman actually looks exactly like the Tecton, just in a different color. I want to go through and experience using these over the next few weeks in my workshop. I need to assess how easy they are to change from a regular clamp to a spreader clamp. The pads are really important for me, so I want to make sure I understand how those are working. And what I'll do is bring you back after I've used these for a few weeks. We'll talk about the pricing of each of these, the functions and features of each of these, and we'll compare the clamping force so you can have all the information you need to decide which one of these tools is best for you. For my first test, what I'm going to do is use the scale to measure the force that these clamps provide. They're rated for 300 pounds, so I need something pretty strong. I've decided I'm using 4x4s to do this. Now, I need to figure out how to mount the scale, how to set these up in a way that I can test these. So this is some of the tinkering I like to do in my workshop. If I put a half lap joint here, that'll be a good strong joint. And then I need to hook up the scale. So this goes on here. 
and this goes on up here. So I need some sort of eye bolt here to connect that. And then down here, I need to make a platform. So the clamp needs to come down here. And then I'm going to need another brace across here. So I've got an anchor point, And that way I can measure the pressure that this clamp is exerting on the scale. I need to figure out this area here. So let me get out the scrap metal bin. I keep scrap metal around me because it's handy when inventing things. There's, oh, that would make a good platform. So I can use that here. And then I need some eye bolts there and then something to connect the two parts. Oh, this is from suspended ceiling. That should be good and strong. So I get that. I just need some eye bolts and we should be good to go. Let's see what we've got in here. Most of these are lags. So one of those will work for the top. There's one bolt. There's another one. Let's see. Oh, and there's a third. So this should work. This one's long enough. Oh, it'll actually fit through there. So I can use a bolt for that. And then these two, I hook them up like this. We should be good to go. Now that I have a plan, I can put this together and test out the clamps. just been searching for nuts to go on these and I realized this is a reverse thread so that won't work but I do have this from the workshop so I'll undo that and then I'll have two eyelets. With the eyelets on now all I need to do is connect it to here. Now I need to put the clamp on this way and that means the wire is going to go up this way. So I'll take that hook off, wire it up there. And the suspended ceiling wire is pretty soft. So I think I'm going to stay away from that. I found some scrap metal here. This is a metal from Yard Signs, uh, much more rigid. So I'll loop that around the eyelets and the scale and we should be good to go. Get this hooked up here and let's give it a try. So that there, let's turn it on. Okay, and start to put pressure on it. Okay, there we go. We're starting to get a reading. Okay, and I'll tighten it more. Yep, it's getting up there. Oh, why is it dropping? I think what's happening here is this wood is flexing. And because I've got this so far out on the arm, it's providing leverage. So what I need to do is move this as close as I can to the beam so that there isn't that flex. I'll move it over to this side here 
And what I might need to do is cut this off to get the clamp nice and tight, but that should fix the problem. We're all set to go here and really excited to test these out. I'm going to work through these in alphabetical order. So the first up is the Bessie clamp. Now you can hear some creaking going on. Yep, it's definitely over 300. So 315, that's definitely doable with a Bessie clamp. Okay, the DeWalt here. Let's give it a try. Let's see how it makes out. So it's over 300. Let me give it one more squeeze. 320. 319. Yeah, that's coming in around 315 once it settles down. Okay, we'll see what the home handyman can do here. Wow. Oh, it's really hard to clamp that down. So I'm at 245 there. Let me see if I can squeeze it one more time. <sighs> no, nope, I've got even less pressure. Try it once more. <laughs> huh. Let me try that again. So we'll start at zero. It's settling down here, but it's not really holding that pressure. Let's see where it settles down. I'd say 165 is about where it's holding. Let's see how the Irwin does. The other one, I'd say it's about 315 as well. Let's see how the Jorgensen does. Well, that's a uh, holding stronger than the others. I'd say that's about 320. And the last one here, this is the Tecton. Let's see how well it does. Oh, huh. well that's not good. Let me try that again. So it looks like it's generating some force. No. Nope. I'll squeeze the handle and let it go. And it keeps coming back. So watch here. I'll squeeze the handle. 137. Back to 51. Let me give it a couple of pumps. Nope. That looks like only about 50. Well, that's pretty disappointing clamping performance from this clamp. This is one of the ones I purchased on Amazon. The Tecton is providing less than 20% of the clamping pressure compared to most of the others. The other one I purchased on Amazon is the Home Handyman, and it, at 165 pounds, is only producing half the clamping pressure compared to most of the ones in this test. 
Well, I think that was a successful test using this clamping device. I enjoy making things in my shop, and I'm working on an invention right now I thought I'd mention called Clean Lathe. You can see my invention process from the concept right through to hopefully getting this product on the shelf on my Clean Lathe YouTube channel. I'll leave a link up here and in the video description as well. Let's move on to the next test. I brought up this chair so we can test out the clamps on a real piece of furniture. You can see chair legs like this are splayed. They're not perfectly parallel, they're on a bit of an angle. So I want to test the grippiness of the pads. Because when I clamp something like this, that clamp needs to stay in place and not slide off. So it's a really important feature. I'll turn this around and we'll give it a try. We'll do this in alphabetical order again, so we'll start off with the Bessie. The trigger is down here to be able to release it. So what I'm going to do is put it on this round over here on this end and the same thing on this end and we'll give it a clamp and see what happens. Yep, so it's not falling down, it's not sliding. Oh, I just moved it and it is. Now, there's an interesting feature here. There's a cross mark on here. I wonder if if I line that up on the point that extends the most on the leg, I wonder if that helps. Oh, yeah, it does. That's, wow, that's nice and sturdy. I think that's much better than what I've been using. Let me just grab one of my clamps. This is uh, the second generation quick grip clamp that I have. I'll put it on here for comparison. And it, it's looser than the Bessie clamp. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So the DeWalt clamp also has these crosshairs on them. So I'll line them up and see how they work here. Okay. They seem to be holding. Yep, so that's good. The next one is the Home Handyman and it's got a flat surface on here. So I'll line this up here. <laughs> so that is a problem. Now watch here, it's starting to creep. So what happens is when a clamp can't grip, the force just continues to work, especially on these finished surfaces. It's not like woodworking where you've got bare wood, you've actually got some slick surfaces. So the clamp test on this home handyman is a fail to me. The next one up is the Irwin. So it doesn't have any cross marks on it. The padding does seem a little softer, not as hard as some of the others. And this pad also has a pivot. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's the only one that has that feature. So line it up here. Give it a squeeze. And it's holding as well. Pretty firm. So that's a pass, that's a good one there. So next up we've got the Jorgensen. The pad here is longer than the others. The other pads typically are just on the foot. So when I clamp this, I'm gonna line it up on the center of the foot there. Let's see how this works. Oh. That's not good. Maybe I didn't clamp that in the right spot. You can see it's moved up here. Let me just try that again. Okay, yep, that's good and solid there. It's not moving. The last one here is the Tecton and the pads on this are smooth. 
Let's see how this works. Now this is the one that is the same, it looks like the same design as the Home Handyman, just in a different color. And watch this. Nope, that won't work. For the results here, I've got four passes and I'm gonna give a fail to the Home Handyman and the Tecton clamp. As I mentioned before, I've got three generations of the Quick Grip clamp in my workshop. I reached out to the inventor, Joe Sorensen, and talked to him about his inspiration for the invention. He was working on a boat that he was building and he was struggling with getting parts put together. So he went to the hardware store and asked for a one-handed clamp. Turns out, it didn't exist. So he worked with his friend Dwight, who was a machinist, and they came up with a Quick Grip clamp. And it was inspired by the caulking gun. Does this look familiar? So what they did was they took this type of device and put it on a bar clamp. And that's where this invention came from. It was invented in 88, it was patented in 1990, and this is the first version that came out. You can see on the label here, it's got a 1990 date on it. And if I go to the end of the clamp here, you can see it's also got the patent number. Joe sold the invention to American Tools and he went to work for them. And he put some innovations into the tool and one of them is the spreader clamp. So again, another innovation that he came up with, being able to flip this end for end, and now the clamp works as a spreading device. So you can see here, this is a label that uh, was improved and changed, but there was another transaction that happened, and that was the Irwin Tool Company bought Quick Grip, and that's why we've got the Irwin Quick Grip Clamp. When I talked with Joe, he also talked about the innovation of being able to move the clamp faster with one squeeze, so you've got fewer squeezes required to get this to travel down the bar. Now for my third test, it's going to require some subjective assessment. I'm going to look at how easy these are to convert from a regular clamp to a spreader clamp, how easy are they to squeeze and release, and to do that, I'm going to pull in another YouTuber you might be familiar with her. She's from John's Furniture Repair. Trina, thanks for participating in this. I think my this will be fun. My pleasure. <laughs> As you can see, Trina has a clamp wall here, so she has lots of experience using these clamps. So why don't we start with the Jorgensen and Bessie. Okay. Pretty easy. This one actually has a hidden feature. So there's a, a dovetail slot there. Oh. And it allows you to take two clamps, slide them together, oh. and all of a sudden you now have a clamp that's twice as long. Uh, ah, that, that is that very feature. cool, actually. So let's look at the Urban and DeWalt. You've got both of these clamps. Yeah, those so are my two mainstays. You're used to the DeWalt. Yeah, this one I like because it's just, I don't have to push anything really. It's just really, really easy to put on and off. Yeah, that it's is kind of my favorite. It's, I mean, I'm used to using this kind too, so I look a little bit more fluid with it maybe, but it's, it's really easy. And I don't know what it is about DeWalt. I always just like the size of their handles, but I am kind of liking the, the Bessie handle for, you know, when you have to get your hand around, I don't have the biggest hands, but I don't have the smallest hands either. And when you have to get your hand around to use a lot of pressure, yep. it's nice if you can start a little closer together. And oh, this one, yep. you can see like the, the difference here. I'm just kind of noticing how much smaller the Bessie yeah. is. You can really start from a little bit more of a closed grip and get a good clamp on it. Okay. And then this new Irwin, um, I much prefer to the old style. It's kind of like the other ones, but not quite. You just push it through and pop it off that way. I like that. That's quite easy to pop back on and and do that's not that's almost as easy as the uh, button also this is pretty hard plastic here mm -hmm. and you could you can bruise your hands squeezing these I've done that and this one again I really like this Bessie grip it's got a nice soft uh, rubber handle so it's and it's got rounded edges here so you don't get those corners digging into your hand yeah, if you compare the, that the one Bessie does too actually the Jorgensen. Yeah. So there's a bit of a shape difference there. You yes. see the Jorgensen almost has a grip spot for your Yeah, that's not hands. bad either. And it's got, again, the nice rounded. Mm -hmm. And this one's rounded, but uh, it's not a hard, hard plastic, but it is a harder plastic. But this one's got square edges, which can kind of yeah. dig into your hand there. Yeah. I bought the cheapest ones I could find on Amazon. Yeah. These are all 24 inch, so we were getting the same size. Okay. So this one's Tecton, and this one's called Home Handyman. Cool. Cool names. So you have to take this off all the way, I think. And there's Wait, like a screw I'll bolt do. that comes it out. Pull it and you gotta keep this in your hand while you switch it over. 
Yeah, so you got two parts to play with. Yeah, you got two. Then you got to get this lined up on the other side. I feel like I'm in one of those commercials for uh, Easy Wrap or something. Oh, and then you're dropping. <laughs> oh, and then we're losing pieces. So the nut is the supposed nut to stay on this side, but you're going to have to put your finger there so it doesn't pop out. But you do have to hold your finger on that nut when you're taking it off because it'll drop. And then pull this out, grab this. It fits pretty good. That's fine. Keep your finger there. And then that was a little quicker that time. So, now, yeah. One, one thing I did notice when I use these is you notice how all of these you're pumping towards the clamping area? Yes. You hold that up. Oh, interesting. The Away. The handle is the opposite. That is really interesting. So spots here. Because usually finger. I come like to a chair or something and I'll be doing this while I watch it go in. I would have to have my hand this way yeah. while I put it in. <laughs> That's very awkward. <laughs> so let's grade these in terms of ease of use. Okay. High, medium, low. I think those ones are obviously a low. These would be a low. <laughs> I would say ease of use, for me, it's got to be number one for the button uh, for switching over. This one would be. Um, I think next I would probably pick the Bessie or the Jorgensen. So yeah, I think that's what I would say. Well, that's great. Well, thank you for weighing in on this. Yeah. <laughs> this is a very subjective test. The other ones yeah. I've done are scientific. Yes. So I wanted to just get a second opinion on yeah. um, how to evaluate these. Yep. Um, so I'll add that to my chart here. Yes. And thank you very much for participating. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> so if you haven't found John's Furniture Repair on YouTube yet, trying to make some wonderful videos right here in her workshop. And you can watch those. I'll leave a link in the video right at the top of the screen here so you can click on that. Thanks, guys. I'll take one of my older Irwin clamps and compare it to the handle here. There's quite a difference in the shape. You see here it comes out a little bit, but there's a nice little niche in here. The major difference is if you look at them at the front. So I'll turn this around. The handle on the new one is three quarters of an inch. The older one, it's an inch. And it's much more rounded here. It does make a much more comfortable grip. The triggers on these are three quarters of an inch, on the Jorgensen it's seven eighths, and on the Bessie it's one inch. And that surface area certainly helps make that grip more comfortable. Now the release on here and here out front, and on these two, they're in the handle. In my testing, it doesn't seem to make a difference where they're located, so it's not a differentiator. What does make a difference is this handle design. You see here on the Bessie, this is curved uh, towards the handle. This one here kicks out, and you can see these two kick out as well. And what that does is allows me to get my pinky into the grip here. So instead of pulling with three fingers, I've got four. So it makes it easier. And I have large hands. If you've got medium or small size hands, this is going to make a difference. And I'll show you what I mean. I'll pull this, put my hand on here, and you can see my pinky is extended there. So really, I'm pulling with three fingers until I get it so far, and then I can get that in there. I put the results in the chart, and let's take a look. I give the home handyman and the Tecton a poor rating here. The handles were backwards and they were difficult to change to spreader clamps. The rest of the clamps were easy to change to spreader clamps, but the handle difference on the Irwin, I give it a fair rating because it's not as comfortable as the rest. Let's move on to talking pricing. I'll arrange these clamps from cheapest to most expensive. Based on Amazon pricing in Canadian dollars, the home handyman is $21.44. The Tecton is $24.97. The Irwin Quick Grip is $29.99. The Bessie is $35.99. The DeWalt is not listed on Amazon, but the MSRP is $44.99. And the Jorgensen is $53.99. Based on all this testing and the pricing, what would I recommend? Well, the first thing I'd do is get rid of these bottom two. They did not perform well, and I wouldn't even trust them to use them in my workshop. So that leaves us with these four. Let's take a look at the chart again to see how they differ. The testing results from these four clamps is pretty consistent. The one difference is the quick grip. The handle is not that comfortable, but if you're not using it that frequently and you've got a limited budget, the quick grip is your biggest bang for the buck. So that's my choice for value. The best clamp that I like in this is the Bessie clamp. So it's got a good price on it. It's got a very comfortable handle. Uh, this Bessie clamp is my favorite. And this is not a sponsored video, so no one's paid to have their product in this video. But if Bessie wants to sponsor me and my channel going forward, I'd love to entertain that conversation.
If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, you can click over here, click on the bell icon, you get notified every time we publish a video. I'm going to leave another video I know you'll enjoy right here. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. <music>